welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon, and today we have a very special program. Now, if you've been watching for a minute, you know that I like to say things about coffee, but I hope you understand that it is a comfort, but it's not my go-to for all comfort. In fact, Ralph Waldo Emerson said a brilliant coffee quote. He said, coffee is good for talent, but genius wants prayer. And prayer is the number one thing that we go to. And I know that's why you're watching today. Well, we have a very special guest today. She's dedicated her life to being a voice to the voiceless. And probably without a plan, but just little steps of obedience has become a force to be reckoned with in an industry and a social ill that we all despise and want to do something about, but we don't know how. One thing that Proverbs 31 says, and I know many of you, that's a prayer. I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. It says, speak up for the people who have no voice, for the rights of the misfits, speak out for justice, stand up for the poor, marginalized and destitute. And that is what Dottie Groover Skipper is doing in her life. We're gonna hear about it, you wanna stay tuned. But before we do, let's go to the Homekeeper's Kitchen where Stephanie has a great little light vegetarian meal. It is a corn bean salad. Let's go. Welcome back to the Homekeeper's Kitchen. I am so excited that you're here. I have special guests today. Steve and Carol Cunningham are with me. Steve is the National Sales Director here at CTN. Carol is his wife. Hey. <laughs> they have an amazing show on Christian television called Destined to Rome. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to show you the trailer. We're going to make some black bean corn salad. Super simple recipe. You're going to love it. Yummy. And then we'll taste it and we'll see how it is. But first, we're going to show you the trailer. So let's do that first. Destined to Rome. Hey, hey! Doesn't that look like so much fun? It I does. Can't, I does can't it? wait to watch full episodes. I've seen, you know, little video clips here and there, but I can't wait to see a full episode. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. But first, let, let's put together a black bean corn salad. You're going to juice some limes for me. Right. You're going to cut up some cilantro for me. I have three cans of, or three cups of black beans that I've rinsed and drained. I have some um, corn that is not cooked. It was frozen, but it calls for... Um, corn off the husk but I didn't do that I just did frozen corn it was on a husk one time <laughs> at some point it was on a husk true story I have cherry tomatoes and then I have some red onion which is the best onion to eat raw yes it is yes it so, so some red onion and I'm gonna put some salt in it super super simple side dish this would be great if you picked up a rotisserie chicken already cooked, Ooh, right? Yeah. And it's put, so pretty. Yes. Look you at put, those colors. Put this together, maybe have a roll on the side, and you got a really good, yummy, easy, super simple dinner. Awesome. Let me put some salt in here. So, Carol. Yes. Tell me how you guys came up with the idea for Destin to Roll. Well, um, Steve um, is... His part of his job is is putting new programs on, mm -hmm. and we've been praying for a long time for new, different, exciting programs that wouldn't necessarily necessarily be um, a talking head. Yeah, a, t a talking head <laughs> wouldn't necessarily be preaching. Mm -hmm. But so, and we both love to travel. Mm -hmm. So one time I was praying, and uh, the Lord said, well, "Why don't you do something?" Mm -hmm. And actually, I. I, talk, I talked to Steve, I texted him, I said, how about if we did something? <laughs> like when you come up with the problem, sometimes the Lord makes you come up with a solution too. Yeah, you got that. <laughs> Stop complaining and do it yourself. Get yeah. off your butt and do it. <laughs> 
so that, that's what we did, actually. We talked to a few of the people here about if they thought it was a good idea, and several of them did, and even gave us a few ideas. And so we just continued to pray about it. And then one day huh, I people said... People helping people. Yes. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> and then one day I just said, how about we just do a trip and see how we do with it? Yeah. So that's what we did. Well, we didn't know what we were doing. No. I'll and take so the one. so we hit minutes. YouTube and did a bunch of tutorials. Yes. Nice. YouTube. Mm -hmm. okay. It saves everything. <laughs> everything we try to do at home. I'm like, okay, let's YouTube you it. We'll do it all. But I love, so, do you guys like cilantro? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Not too much. Carol's trying yeah. to be nice. <laughs> okay, cilantro is a love hate. We know. I this. used to really dislike it a lot, but I've gotten I more and more love used to it. cilantro. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about. Give me a, a problem that you guys came up with on one of your trips, because part of the show is showing how Christians deal with problems. Yes, right. exactly. That's Nothing funny. about nope, your nope. That's what so you have here. So for when, oh. when we first started traveling, we had to get some new equipment that we'd never worked with before, and one of those items was a gimbal, which holds your phone or your camera, so that like if you're taking videos in the car, it, I don't know what you call it, what do you, it stabilizes it. That's stabilizes it. And Big so word. That, you're not like this, but we did not ha know how to operate the gimbal. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, and, and uh, it was all over the place. The phone was going like this and like this. And if you take your phone out, the gimbal goes. And I had water in my, in my, in my, between my legs, a bottle of water and hit the bottle of water and we had water going all over the car oh, and the funny. gimbal's still going like this. So yeah, a lot of it was learning new things. We have learned how to learn nice. a lot so of new stuff. Maybe a little frustration. Yes, we a did a good job of that. And that. But a lot of laughter. I know oh, you guys yeah. laugh a lot. Yeah, we did laugh a lot about okay, it. Okay, so I mix this all up. You put this in the fridge. You let the all the flavors come together and marry. But we're going to try it because oh we need gosh, to try it, it for so our friends on TV. It looks TV. so good. It looks delicious. I could eat just this. I think so, too. So let's do this. Okay. Okay, you leave that cilantro. There's cilantro for you. Mm. I love lime. Ooh, wow. I love cilantro. This is fresh. It's bright. The beans give it a little depth. Mm. The corn gives it a little sweetness. That cilantro is cut so well. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I don't know who did it. It's delicious. did a great job. <laughs> this is delicious. You want this recipe. Oh, yes. It's black bean corn salad. The amounts will come up on the screen. There's so many ways you can get it. I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you. Watch for Destined to Rome on Christian Television yes, Network. Yes, please. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. It was a delicious meal, great, light, wonderful, and it's such a joy to have ideas for recipes and for uh, cooking because my guests and I today love food. We're foodies, but we don't necessarily love to prepare food, correct. right? <laughs> That's correct. So today it's a joy to have an incredible woman who is a pioneer. She has been um, on front line of a social injustice calling. She has taken on one of the Goliaths of our day, which can be very daunting. And she has worked tirelessly in the field. God has given her awards and recognitions, allowed her to sit on boards federally, nationally, statewide, and locally to be a champion for women and for children and for boys and for those who have been exploited, um, the vulnerable. And although sometimes it seems like all of our efforts aren't making very big strides, hers are. And so I am so honored uh, to be able to interview you and to talk to you about this, Dottie. Thank you so much for your life's work. Thank you. It is an honor to be here. Thank you for this opportunity <laughs> to spend some time with you. Yay. Well, you have been, um, you have worked with uh, two attorney generals, one being my my little cousin. That is uh, so cool. Ashley Moody. <laughs> yes. And that has been one uh, that she had two platforms going into the election 
and you know one of them was big pharma right. and one of them was human trafficking That's and right. that after being a, a judge and seeing so much in juvenile court yes she said I've got to do something about it and so you too through heart dance through uh, the homeland security position through all these different things you too have said I've got to do something about it yes but before we go to this passion calling let's go back to your love story because okay. you know we're women like, we of all course. want to start of with course. you know a love story tell me about your husband about your family yes um, my husband and I were our childhood, you know, high school sweethearts, and we graduated. I went off to Mercer University in Macon, Georgia, and he decided to go into boot camp, into the military. And so on his way to boot camp, he came by the university to see me, and I ended up breaking up with him <laughs> that night. Daddy! <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> but it gets even worse. Little did I know, he was going to propose to me that night, and he ended up throwing my engagement ring in the Mississippi River. And I did not know about it for 37 years. Wow! I found out I was actually going through a divorce 37 years later with my former husband, and I get, but before Facebook, there was something called classmates.com. <laughs> so he, he found me on classmates.com, reconnected, emailed with me. I almost fell off of my chair because uh, he truly has always been the love of my life. Aww. And um, we talked for two or three months before, via email, before I got the nerve to say, okay, you can call me on the phone. And then we... I guess it was probably six months later and after my divorce went through that we met in person and uh, we picked up where we left off, sparks flying and anyway, um, it's quite a story. We've been married now for 13 years. And you and have how many children? We have seven children. That's wonderful. Uh, I have four beautiful bonus children, um, uh, six sons wow. and one daughter. So wow. there's always a lot of drama. <laughs> I'm a boy on. mom. I understand. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You got yes. one girl. That's awesome. That's right. And she's the oldest. So she's like the mother hen okay. to everybody else. She keeps everyone in line. She does. Cracks the whip, she does. right? She does, yes. Oh. But, but Roger is definitely the wind beneath my wings oh. and really is, I think, why I can sustain the work that I, I do since having him back in my life now. It really, he helps me to soar. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. Well, isn't God faithful that he brings things full circle and he restores yes. and he just brings beauty for ashes he in does. our lives if we don't give up. He does. And if we stand. That's right. So That's right. I, I love that part of your story. So you have this amazing family that support you in, in this calling. Uh, you are a missionary, you're an mm -hmm. ordained elder. Correct. So you work in ministry, you're a corporate woman for years. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the transition where you knew I've got to transition out of the corporate world and start Heart Dance and do this full time. Yes, I started Heart Dance about, well, 2008. Um, but even going back further than that, it was over 40 years ago that I believe was the time when the Lord really plucked a string in my heart. I was teaching self-esteem classes in the most marginalized areas of Tampa Bay. And there was a 13-year-old girl and a four-year-old, well, a 13-year-old girl who wanted to bring her four-year-old sister to the next class. And I said, great, because this 13-year-old had so much anger in her, you know, throwing chairs across the room and things I just was not equipped to deal with at that time. So I said, yes, bring your little sister. Well, she brought her little sister and you know sometimes how you just know that you know that you know that something isn't right. And I know it was the Holy Spirit nudging me. Yes. And it conflicted me so much that I asked the housing authority who had hired me to let's find out about these girls' lives. You know, let's look into where they live, their background. To make a long story short, the 13-year-old and her four-year-old sister lived with their grandmother who was selling both of them on the street every night in exchange for drugs. And to make it even more horrific, and it's still 40 years later, gets to me. The little four-year-old had a sexually transmitted disease. And I can't tell you how that 
shook me to the core. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with it. It was human trafficking, but there was no label of human trafficking back then. Yeah. Um, so that was, I think, when the Lord really plucked a string in my heart. Um, I was working in the corporate world then, um, but he plucked that string in my heart. And I started volunteering at sexual assault centers and, and things along those lines. And then, you know, I was still working on the corporate world in 2008. And he, I just very clearly heard him say, you need to just let all of that go. Um, and your, your husband, he was working for the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office at that time. So wasn't making a killing financially, but he said, you have to trust me. And Roger and I talked about it. And he said, if you heard so clearly from the Lord that you're supposed to step away from the corporate world and start a ministry that the, the, the sole mission of the ministry is to go into the strip clubs in Tampa Bay and minister to the women in the clubs. So I did, I, I, you know, I'm, what, Lord? <laughs> what? <laughs> you want me to, me? I grew up in the Beaver Cleaver household, and for those who are too young to know what that is, it was just squeaky clean, uh, amazing, happy Christian family um, who had never experienced anything like that before. So I guess I just wanted to be obedient to what I felt the Lord was calling me to do. So I, I left my corporate job and opened this ministry. It started through the Underground Network uh, here in Tampa. And uh, now we, we're on our, on our own. But that's how Heart Dance came to be. I love several things you said. You know, God, uh, serving God is the highest calling. And so many times it's, it's so difficult to let go of a career path or a successful uh, your retirement and benefits and health insurance to go do something totally by faith. That's right. And yet you saw the need, the need became the call, and you said yes, which took a lot of faith. There's no okay. promises when you say yes to God other than That's he right. will supply all your needs That's right. and take care of and you. And he has. And he does. And he, he does. And yes. you, you, you did that brave jump and, and to help the underserved. That's, I say that's what Jesus would have done. Mm -hmm. You know, he, mm -hmm. he would have, he did. It's not what he would have done, it's right. what he did. Right. So you, here you are, you're, you're starting all over again, uh, just on obedience, and you start going into the strip clubs and, and bringing the love of God. Yeah. How, how, tell us about that ministry. Yes, it's, it's pretty remarkable, I think, when I really stop and think about it, because we have this beautiful team of men and women. Um, the women on the team go into the clubs to minister to the women, and we are still just in awe that the club owners, the managers love it when we come in. We go straight back to the dressing room. Um, usually it will be one of the dancers who say, the church ladies are here. Aww. They're here to pray with us. <laughs> and you know, we do, we, we just hold hands with them in a circle in the dressing room and pray corporately and then individually if, if they want us to do that. And just, you know, we ask them the question, you know, where do you see yourself in the next five years? What did you dream about being when you were a little girl? And then how can we help you, you know, get to where you want to be? What's so beautiful is we go into the clubs because we just want these precious women to know that we see them yes. and with no judgment and that if they, whether they're ready to get out of that life or whether they're not ready to get out of that life, we are there for them and helping them however it's feasible for our small ministry to help them. Yeah. And what we're seeing too with the men, I was not interested in having men on the team, but the Lord had a different plan. Yeah. Um, there were three murders in three clubs within three weeks quite a few years back. And I had a precious pastor call me saying, Dottie, you know, I, we have men of valor who want to go out with you in the ministry. And I said, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what we're finding now is the men, when the women come out of the, the strip clubs, our men of valor many times are surrounding a club owner, 
um, a valet guy, a door guy, laying hands on them, praying over them with tears streaming down their face, wow. inviting them to breakfast, inviting them to Bible studies. So we feel like the men are just as important in this ministry as as the women and just it's just amazing what God is doing changing one heart at a time yeah I love um, the love that you express you know love co covers mm -hmm. a multitude of sins right. and you go in and you, and you sow seed and it's not your job That's to right. decide you know that seed could be for then or then or 10 years later or 10 months later That's right. and I love that there I love hearing that there's men that are going in the trenches as well and, and fighting this battle. Yes. Uh, yes. Because it is, I'm sure many times you've said, this is overwhelming, Lord. This is such many a- Many times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How have you dealt with this, that struggle that there's just not enough of us in the field? How can we ever make a dent in this? Yeah, I, I truly believe, you know, we're undergirded with prayer before we, before we go into that darkness every time undergirded. And many times there are many of us feeling like, are we really making a difference, you know? Because it's not a very glamorous, um, you know, ministry. ministry. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Um, and you wonder, are we really getting through? We're going in, we're shining the, the light of Christ, but you know, Will we ever see the seeds being watered and then will the harvest ever come? We, we probably won't see much of that harvest. And just when the team is feeling a little down, we'll go into a club and, you know, a woman might say, you could be anywhere in the world tonight, but you chose to come in and yeah. to see me. And it, it just gives us that, I think the Lord knows when we need that little uplift. Um, coming from the, the precious women that we serve and that gives that little spark to yeah. us like, well, we are making a difference. Yeah. And, and when the clubs were shut down during the height of the pandemic, we did not go in for six months. So we didn't know what to expect when right. we were able to go back and we pulled into our first club and some of the women were standing outside the door. They realized when we got out, we were pulling our gifts out of the trunk of the car they screamed, the church ladies are back. Aww. And they came running out to the car to help us get their gifts. And they were just just squealing with delight. And we thought, oh my gosh, they, they we are, missed you. We, we are missed making you. a difference. And I think because for five minutes, I think we plant the seed of hope yeah. in them and pour words of truth into them that they don't necessarily get anywhere else. Well, they're God's precious daughters. Absolutely. And, and He loves them, and He will go to any extreme to express that love, but He needs people. And I'm so grateful that you are one of those people and that you have rallied together a tribe mm -hmm. of people. Uh, Jamie Kent, who is yes. president of No More, yes. that you, you serve. I'm and you working work. with the No More Foundation yeah. now, yes. He said a quote at a banquet that said, don't do nothing just because you can't do everything. Mm -hmm. Unpack that for the person that just says, I don't want to do that because how can I possibly make a difference? Yeah, I feel like we can't do everything, but we can each do something very similar to what Jamie, and maybe we we, maybe we can do everything, just not all at the same time. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think it's so important to truly be in tune with, you know, through reading scripture, through worship, through prayer, through song, to, to be in tune with what you feel God is telling you to do. And once you are in tune with that, then have the courage yeah. <laughs> and the boldness to open the doors that he opens for you. Yeah. And no matter what it is, um, if it's one seemingly minute little thing, it's not minute in the kingdom of, of the Lord. It is, it is all equally important. So even if you feel like you can't do this big grandiose thing, you know, be in tune with what you feel God wants you to do, no matter how big or how small, and have the boldness 
to, to do it. To step out. To step and out. And trust him. And be obedient. Yeah. yeah. Well, the show has gone by way too quickly. There's so many different avenues that we could talk about. But before we close, I would love for you to just let the Holy Spirit allow you to minister to someone watching today and, and just use your ministry gift and your yes to encourage them today, if you don't mind. Of course, of course. If you're watching today and maybe you are a, a woman, a, a man, a boy or a girl who feel like you're, you're stuck in a place where you feel like that's not where you're supposed to be, then I really invite you to, to pray, to pray without ceasing, to read the scripture, to find a trusted spiritual mentor that you can talk with and, and be bold enough and courageous enough to actually take those steps that the Lord might be prompting you to do. So if you are in the industry, in the adult entertainment industry, please know that there are many organizations out there that want to help you, um, to help you get out of that lifestyle when you're ready, help you make safety plans to get out because you might be under the control of your pimp. So, so just please be bold and courageous enough to do that. So why don't we go ahead and pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for, for, for you, for believing in us, for allowing us to be your, your daughters and, and your sons and heir to your throne, Lord. I just ask that you continue to guide us. Those who are seeking you, let them find you, Lord, and listen to the, the word of truth that will be poured into them. So, Lord, I just ask you, all of this in your precious and mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Dottie, thank you so much just for your heart. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for uh, the, the cost, yeah. that, the, the price you've paid because the oil is costly. Yes. And thank you for coming here today. And I, I encourage all of you, you know, by Dottie's story, uh, I hope you've been inspired uh, to see things, say things, and do things that, that are beyond you. You represent heaven. You are an ambassador. And there are children around you, women around you, others around you that need you to say yes and step in to your calling. We need to occupy until he comes. And so I, I, that is such a huge takeaway today. Thank you for watching the program today. Please be in touch with Dottie, her heart dance organization. Pray for her, pray for her tribe, support her and help her in any way that the Lord leads you. We'll see you next time on Come Home.